What's up everyone, Justin here, back with a review for money in the motherfucking bank. Holy shit, that was a great show. That was a great pay-per-view. I know it's called Premium Live Event, but I'm always, again, gonna call it a pay-per-view because I want to. My God. But I did not watch it on pay-per-view. I watched it on Peacock. Anyways... You would have to be a fucking moron, dumbass, to pay, like, whatever it costs, 40 bucks, 45 still, I don't know. But you would have to be a moron to order WWE on pay-per-view instead of getting a Peacock. If you can't get Peacock or afford it, well, your internet... Or if you, I don't know, if you don't want it, your internet must be slow. I don't know, but that's up to you if you want it or not. I want it because for the monthly pay-per-views, special events, and I watch old wrestling also, and they got movies also to watch. Like, uh, last October, I got to fucking watch Halloween Kills on Peacock. So, uh, my God, this Money in the Bank 2022. Damn good show. Damn, damn good show. Way better than last year's. This has been maybe the best Money in the Bank ever. Pay-per-view ever. Money in the bank. This, I mean, for a fucking show that was not one of the big four. Not the Rumble, not WrestleMania, not SummerSlam, not Survivor Series. One of the best, I would guess I'll say B pay-per-views. Seriously, one of the best B pay-per-views ever I'm gonna have to fucking turn this light out it keeps blinking so uh this fucking light bulb it was dead and now it's blinking I don't get it I'm gonna have to seriously have to take it out of there because that shit's annoying I'll be back in a second I thought it'd stop blinking if I turned it off and on, but it started, so fuck it. I'll do the video like this. Anyways, um, yeah. Talking about B-level pay-per-views, like, in the history of WWE, Judgment Days, Backlashes, um, Unforgivens, Great American Bashes, what else? In your houses, this Money in the Bank 2022, how it was booked, how a lot of matches delivered, the outcomes were great, except for the main event, but I expected that, kind of, when he was added to the match. But seriously, for a... For not a major, major pay-per-view. It was great. Damn good. Up first, we had the kickoff, but who gives a crap? There were no matches on the kickoff. Nothing happened but talk. And I didn't start watching till like 20 minutes before the pay-per-view started. I'm seriously not going to watch a whole hour of a kickoff when they have no matches. That's a waste of my time. But up first, it was announced right before the pay-per-view started that the women, women's money in the bank would kick off the show. And my God, they kicked it off. It was fantastic. It was fucking great. 
No, not every spot and everything about it was not perfect, but who gives a crap? Not many matches are uh, perfect, especially ladder matches. You could fuck up and do a botch easy. Not, I didn't see any botches, but my guy is great. I'm going to have to watch it back because I was on Twitter really paying attention and reading all the tweets I was getting. But uh, anyways, that's what Peacock's for if you missed most of the match or you didn't pay 100% attention to it. The best thing about streaming in Peacock and streaming services, you can go back and watch it any fucking time of the day or the night. You can watch matches back, pay-per-views back. It's great. It is so great. Anyways... And my God, I was pretty surprised who won the women's money in the bank. Alexa took a nasty fall and like fell back on her back and hit the ladder. She looked like she's in pain. And my God, Asuka was laid out on a ladder between the table and the apron. Becky jumped on her in her stomach and... The fucking ladder, I don't know if it, it should have been a gimmick ladder and broken in half. But no, Becky just bounced off Asuka. I hope Asuka had her arms like protecting her ribs because she could have broken or cracked ribs. I hope not. I hope none of these women got injured. But that was sick. That was a nasty bump. That Becky jumped off a giant ladder onto Asuka. And the fucking ladder didn't break or give. What the fuck? Why wasn't it gimmicked? I don't know. I guess Asuka and Becky don't weigh enough. Maybe they couldn't break it in half because they don't weigh enough. But my god, it was damn good. I did not expect Shotzi to win... But she did pretty good. She was uh, highlighted in the match for more than I thought she'd be. Raquel was not winning, I didn't think. I thought Becky would win. But I was uh, wrong. Pleasantly surprised. I'm glad I was wrong. Liv fucking Morgan wins. It was so awesome. It was so great that Liv Morgan won. I am a fan of her. I fucking love Liv. I have uh, been a fan of her since I saw her in NXT. And she had that crazy theme music. It was like um, fucking... Um, like Mickey Mouse music on acid. It was, it was insane, her theme. And she would wear the backwards hat and bounce up and down on the ropes. She had a crazy fucking theme. It was like seriously someone on drugs uh, came up with that theme song for Liv in NXT. She's been in the company for eight years Michael Cole kept saying that, that she's been in the WWE a homegrown talent. You could say, uh, yeah, Liv wasn't pushed soon enough, that it's long overdue, yeah, yeah, forget about all that. At least they did it tonight, at least she got the fucking big push tonight. Tonight, she became a bigger star. Definitely. Because of how they booked her. Liv Morgan wins the women's money in the bank. The fans loved it in Vegas. I loved it watching at home. Most of Twitter loved it. If you're not a fan of Liv, or if you don't like Liv, or if you ever bash her on social media, you're a moron. Liv is great. She's loved, I think, she's loved by the fans. And if you don't love her or like her 
or think she's gotten better in the ring, you're a fucking moron. And you're wrong because she has gotten better. And uh, she really deserved to win. So uh, good for Becky, by the way, not letting uh, her ego get in the way. I'm not saying she has an ego, but she is a top star. She could have tried to use her ego against the other women and live. She could have demanded that, why am I not winning? I should win. I should take on Bianca at SummerSlam or cash in at SummerSlam because... Uh, Bianca and Becky have a history, but the right, the fucking right decision was made. Liv Morgan wins the Women's Money in the Bank 2022. She looks so damn happy. I think she started crying also. And the fans loved it. And again, if you're not a fan of Liv or like her, uh, you're fucking evil. You're an evil, miserable fuck if you don't like Liv Morgan. So, uh, up next, we have the U.S. title. Uh, by the way, the women's Money in the Bank went 16 minutes, uh, 35 seconds. U.S. title Bobby Lashley challenges theory. And my God, Lashley was over as Fuck like he was a hell in a cell. Well, tonight in Vegas, he got cheered a ton. Like, seriously, Vince, don't you hear those reactions to Lashley? And yes, I'm glad he's a new U.S. champion. That's good. That's awesome, at least. He got a title, but they... Wanted, wanted to take the title off theory because what happened in the main event. But Lashley's so fucking over, Vince. If you don't put him in a main event match against Roman at the UK pay-per-view, I think it's called Clash at the Castle in September, if you don't put Lashley in like a three-way with Roman and Drew or something, or Bobby against Roman, that's a mistake to not push Lashley as a main eventer because listen to the reactions he's getting. He's getting reactions like he's a fuck the fucking top baby face in the company. And uh, my god Liv got a hell of a reaction tonight like she's the number one baby face. But I'm talking about for the men. It's Lashley. He is the most over baby face. After him, I'd say probably Brock and Drew. So, uh, yeah, Lashley wins U.S. title. I missed the end. Sadly, my power just fucking went out. I don't know how. I don't know why. I thought I did hear some weird noise outside. Maybe that was a power cutting out. I don't know what happened. Maybe there was a fucking squirrel. On the power line, sometimes animals, squirrels, can actually knock out power. But it came back. Power was out for like a minute. And I was worried. I was pissed. I was like, what the fuck? Now I can't watch Money in the Bank live. But then it came back after a minute. So that was good. So uh, Lashley's the new U.S. champ. He wins by submission. I'm going to have to re-watch it and hear the reaction of uh, him winning because I didn't hear it. Match of the night. Usos defend the undisputed tag titles against Street Profits. <laughs> Holy shit, it was great. Fucking great. 23 minutes, the longest... Not almost the longest match. The second longest match on the show was the tag titles. Usos defended against Street Profits. It was great. Usos win. Again, it was really great. A great tag team match. Crowd was into it like crazy. Both of these teams are two of the best. Usos are the best tag team. 
I would say it's between the Usos and uh, FTR are two of the best right now. Profits are up there also. I think they're damn good. Young Bucks are down, down, way the fuck down at the bottom. If, again, if I made a top 100 tag teams of all time, the Young Bucks would be number 500. That's what I think of them. I'm not a Young Bucks uh, fan, never will be, and in my opinion, they're not one of the greatest teams of all time. So the Usos win what a, a match of the year. Definitely, it was a match of the year. Watch it if you did not see it. Uso Street Profits Money in the Bank 2022 is that good. You gotta watch it. You gotta find it, see it, watch it. I'll fucking watch it again. Is that good? So, uh, women SmackDown. Uh, by the way, Bianca Belair before the Usos and Street Profits. Uh, Bianca Montez uh, Ford's wife, the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, defending against Carmella. Win only seven minutes. It should have been about three minutes, and Bianca should have squashed her like a bug, in my opinion. But no. So, uh, Bianca Belair wins, thank fucking God. Bianca Belair wins, and is still the Raw Women's Champion. That had been really stupid to have Liv cash in on Bianca, in my opinion. It would have been dumb. So, then, uh... Up next, Ronda Rousey after the tag titles. Ronda Rousey defends a SmackDown women's title against Natalia. They had a very good matchup. It was uh, 12 minutes, 30 seconds. Ronda wins. But she took a hell of a beating. She was sitting down in the ring after and Liv's music hits. Liv runs to the ring with the briefcase, gives it to the ref, cashes in. And uh, they had the camera on Rhonda when Liv came to cash in. Rhonda said, I believe, that said you could read her lips. She's like, oh, shit. That was pretty damn funny. Or she just said shit because she knew she was hurt. And Liv was taking advantage of an injured Ronda Rousey. So Liv, uh, this sucked. Liv got in an ankle lock. Rhonda had the ankle lock on Liv for a pretty long time. Liv kept trying to get to the ropes. Did not want to fucking tap. This is not the time to tap out when you're cashing in. And the crowd was booing and booing. I think the crowd thought Liv was going to tap. And WWE was going to fuck us by having Liv lose her cash in. That would have pissed me the fuck off. I'll tell you that. That would have definitely pissed me off and the fans. And again, if you're not a fan of Liv, you're a moron. But uh, Liv got out of the ankle lock and rolled up Ronda. One, two, three, Liv Morgan's the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Her first ever title in WWE. Her first ever championship in any wrestling company. Well, she's only been a part of WWE but still her first title. Also, Liv is a homegrown talent. Yeah, took them like seven years to push her. But, or seven, eight years to push her, but still. Now she's a main event star, in my opinion. So they do still create stars. Liv's a star. Homegrown. John Cena is homegrown. The guy became one of the biggest stars in the world. He's known worldwide. Anyways. Bianca Belair, homegrown. Charlotte Flair, homegrown. So, uh, Roman, homegrown. So, can't say, oh, WWE doesn't create stars. You could even say Drew McIntyre, he got pushed. He wasn't uh, homegrown, but 
he was young as hell, and nobody else really knew where he worked, unless you saw him in the Indies, and wherever he was, Scotland, ain't, uh, not England, I don't know where he worked on the Indies, before WWE, but he did, but still, they made Drew McIntyre a big, big fucking star, and uh, he was known as a WWE guy when he had left the company or got fired. And then he returned, became a big star. Bobby Lashley started in the WWE, so and he's a big fucking star. So you could say he's also homegrown. Bobby Lashley, Batista was homegrown. Randy Orton, homegrown. Alexa Bliss. Homegrown. She's a big star. She's not a star anymore. Like a major star. But she's still a star. And she was homegrown. Street Profits. Homegrown. I don't think they wrestled anywhere. Before WWE. Or NXT. I could uh, probably go on and on. And think of more homegrown talents. Um, let me think. I, th I believe Tyler Breeze was at one point. He was homegrown. Fandango was. I believe Dolph Ziggler was homegrown. He started in WWE. So a lot of homegrown talents at they have made major stars in the last 10 to 5 years. And uh, I put Liv Morgan as a big major top star now because she is the women's champion. If you're the women's champion and you also won money in the bank, you're a top star. And the company obviously believes in Liv to give her money in the bank and give her the title and a win over Ronda Rousey. I don't care if Ronda was selling that she was injured. It's still a win over Ronda fucking Rousey. And good for Ronda for putting over Liv. And not having an ego and, and refusing the job to Liv. Or refusing to lose the title. Ronda put over Charlotte. At WrestleMania, and now she's put over Liv. Fucking good for her. I, I like this Ronda Rousey return because she's putting over other people and elevating them. She's really, really elevated Liv because she's Ronda Rousey, and Liv defeated her. Charlotte didn't need to defeat Ronda. Charlotte was already a star, but Ronda still put her over, and... Since she returned, she's put over Charlotte and Liv. And it, it was shocking. It was surprising. Not only that Liv won Money in the Bank, but that they gave her the title on the same night. I did not think that would fucking happen. I didn't even think, oh, she's going to cash in on Ronda. But she did. And Michael Cole sounded very legit, super happy for Liv. He kept putting her over that she's been working working hard for eight years and she's finally achieved her dream. And Cole was saying she Lita's our favorite wrestler. And I met her at the PC when she started. Uh, they showed for uh, like one or two seconds, like or couple seconds, I believe Liv Morgan's sister was in the crowd. They showed her, but couldn't barely really see her much. Looked like she had blonde hair. I couldn't really tell if she looked like Liv, but she probably is good looking like Liv. But uh, holy fuck, just holy shit, what a moment. One of the greatest moments this year and in WWE history, looking back on it, Liv Morgan winning Money in the Bank and defeating Ronda Rousey, I will look back on it always as a hell of a great big moment.
career, career defining moment, career changing moment where Liv became a top star in the women's division. And they need them. They need more top women, not just Bianca and Becky and Charlotte. And hopefully soon, Bailey's back. And uh, Ronda's a big star. So you got Charlotte, Bailey, Ronda. Now Liv, Bianca. Um, other th And Becky. So that's six women that you could say are top stars. I would like WWE to have about eight or nine women that could be looked at as top stars, but right now they got about six of them. And uh, NXT, I guess you could say Mandy Rose is a top star, definitely. I see Mandy as a top star if she ever comes back to the main roster. Also, I think uh, Nikita Lyons could be a top star. Cora J could in the future for WWE and definitely uh, Roxanne Perez could. So if you call up those three women from NXT, that's nine top women that could be a part of the women's roster in the next two to three years, the next year. So anyways, that's a lot of top women. If they call up those three women in my opinion, you're going to have nine top women a part of the women's roster. And uh, my God, just so great seeing Liv Morgan so happy holding up the SmackDown Women's title. She's finally a fucking champ, and I love it. I so love it. And I am so looking forward to what she does with her uh, title reign and if she's going to face Ronda in a rematch at SummerSlam. That'd be awesome. Or maybe defend it against somebody new. I don't know who. Well, Liv, maybe Charlotte. Charlotte could return and challenge Liv, I guess, but the fans that don't like Charlotte will not like that and will bitch and cry that Charlotte should not be getting a title shot. Or if Bailey return and attack Liv, that'd be great. Bailey Liv at SummerSlam or Bailey Charlotte, not Bailey Charlotte, Liv or Charlotte at SummerSlam or Liv versus Bailey, that'd be good. Or Liv versus Ronda, that'd be good. And Becky's probably going to take on uh, Bianca at SummerSlam, I think. Unless Rhea returns and is ready, then maybe it'll be Rhea. I don't know what they're going to do with the Raw Women's title, but Bianca will be on SummerSlam. So Liv Morgan, unbelievable. What a career night for her. Wins money in the bank, cashes in on Ronda Rousey. Now the uh, main event, the men's money in the bank ladder match. Win 25 minutes. By the way, Liv and Ronda only was 35 seconds. It seemed like it was over a minute to me. But uh, the men's money in the bank, Adam Pierce comes out. And I wish he didn't in announces, but Adam Pierce announces we got a new entrant. I'm putting him in. It's theory. Obviously Vince I guess forced Adam Pierce to put in theory. That's my only guess. Because why else would Adam Pierce care that theory's in it or not? In my opinion, is Vince saying, put him in and get him in there because he's my boy. So a theory's in, and I wish uh, Sonya would have came out on the stage and slapped Adam again for putting in theory. That's not why she slapped him la on uh, SmackDown last night. She slapped him because she just said, you deserve it. Well, Adam Pierce, you deserved another slap tonight for putting in Theory. Theory, Mad Cat Moss, Omas, Riddle, Sami Zayn, Seth 
freaking Rollins, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre, and all of them tore it up. Again, I didn't care for Theory in the match, but I get it. I understand why he's in there. They want to push him. He's a top guy. And no matter how much you like him or don't like him, it was the right thing to do because he is young. You need a future top guy. I don't agree with Theory being a top guy. I don't look at him as a Rock or Steve Austin or Roman or John Cena, but I didn't see The Rock. I definitely didn't see Rocky Maivia as a future top guy. I did not see John Cena when he started as a future top guy. I didn't. But they became top they became top guys by busting their ass and changing their gimmicks. So uh again I won't push theory as the guy, the future guy. He's gonna be my next John Cena. That's what Vince thinks, I guess. And obviously they want to push him. He won Money in the Bank. Theory wins Money in the Bank. This was all great. Everybody picked up uh, Omos and threw him through the announce table. That was awesome. To take him out of the matchup. They all had to team up because the guy's a fucking giant and could crush you. Uh, seriously, Omos, you're weak. Because before you got taken out, you should have destroyed everybody and got the money in the bank. You're taller than everybody, so you wouldn't have to climb as high. You should have smashed everybody, but you couldn't because you're a weak giant. Andre, you are not. So, uh... I would say Omas is better than uh, Gray Kali, for sure, and the Giant Gonzalez. But the men, men's money in the bank was really damn good. And uh, Moss took a nasty fall, and his feet and boots like bounced off the ropes, touched the ropes. I hope he didn't get hurt from that. He could have tore his knee or something. He looked kind of hurt. But he got up real fast because he knew I got to take the curb stomp. Then after the curb stomp, he was laid out near the ref like his legs or knees were hurting and he rolled out of the ring. So anyways, Theory wins again. One of the best non-four big pay-per-views WWE has put on in fucking years and years. Really good. Money in the Bank pay-per-view. The best WWE pay-per-view since WrestleMania 38. It was so good. I loved Liv winning Money in the Bank. I did not expect that. I didn't think they would pull the trigger and push her. I thought for sure it would be Becky. And for the man, I thought it would be Rollins. So... I would have rather had Rollins winning, but it's a nice change that uh, Theory won. Someone new. And definitely Liv is somebody new to win Money in the Bank. She's been there for eight years. But they never pushed her until tonight. And then she cashes in and wins over Ronda. Right there. That makes Liv a major fucking star defeating Ronda Rousey for the title again I don't care if Ronda can say I was injured doesn't matter it's still a win over Ronda Rousey one of the biggest names in the world in sports she actually is a bigger star in UFC in her first run with WWE I believe she's a bigger name then, but she's still a big name. So, my God. For them, giving us live as Money in the Bank and the Women's Champion on the same night. For the Usos, the Profits, tore it up. Match of the Year. Lashley winning the U.S. title. So good. Ronda Natalia was good. 
Not great, but it's good. And the men's money in the bank was damn, damn good. My grade for this pay-per-view. A plus. A fucking plus. Because I love Liv. And I'm so happy for Liv Morgan. Now she can live. Finally live. As a women's champion in WWE. Her first title. I'm so happy for Liv. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye for now.